Hi, this is Matt at AppWorks, and today's video is going to be part of a series. This one, we're going to be taking a look at eight of my favorite tips for working with layouts. So in upcoming series, we'll take a look at tips for working with the graph and working with scripts and calculations and other parts of FileMaker. So with layouts, this is some of my best material. I hope you all agree. So coming in first with number eight, when you're Pasting objects, uh, so copy and pasting, and I want to grab a bunch of fields. So I'll, I'll select this group um, and copy it to the clipboard. And if I just hit paste to duplicate it, they kind of come in wherever they are, and that's a little just difficult to deal with. By the way, I'll give you like a little partial tip there. If I just click and drag, it actually selects everything. But if I hold down the Command key, it only selects what I've completely encircled. So that's definitely a more convenient way to do it. Okay, so let's put these things back on the clipboard. And here's my tip. If you're wanting this to go in a specific location, like inside this box, you can click the mouse in the center of the spot where you want them to go. And then that when they paste, they'll paste in that location. If you then want to get more precise, you can move them around. But that leads to tip number seven, which is how do I nudge those around? And the way to do that is with the up, down, and left, right buttons on the keyboard. And so you can kind of get it, like if you get it sort of close to the corner, this will help nudge it. Uh, and then notice also you get the little guides that pop up automatically when, when it aligns with other objects near it. So that's definitely one that I like. Tip number six. If you have formatted text in a field, um, or really in several different places in FileMaker. For example, let's say that this company name came in because it was copied from a Word document, and it has style, it has uh, a different font, and maybe a different size, and a bold, and italic, and whatever. It's styled. So if I copy that to the clipboard in FileMaker, and then you paste it into an email, this is a really common problem with an email field. It'll come in, and it'll, be, it'll be, um, have all the same style associated with what you do not want in your database. So a really easy way to clean that is if you hit the undo command once, that will leave your entire text there, but it will strip out all of your custom formatting. If you hit undo again, it actually just undoes the entire paste command. So undo is actually a two-step command, which uh, I think a lot of people didn't know, and it's definitely a really, really good tip. Another way to do this, by the way, would be to, um, at the field level to put a filter on your field to just strip the formatting out um, after you've actually pasted your text in, or you could put like a script trigger on it, but that's not for this video. Okay, number five, when you're duplicating a layout, because you want to make a copy of a layout and work with it to make some upgrades, and you're playing with themes, a lot of people when they do that, what they'll do is they'll just go up to the layout menu and click duplicate layout. But what that does is the duplicate goes all the way at the end of your list of layouts, which is you start it up here, and it puts it way down there, and then maybe it's just not where you want it to be. So let's delete that one, because here's what I think is a better way to do it. So the way that I think is good is if you're starting with your layout, go into the Manage Layouts window first, and when you duplicate the layout from here with the Duplicate button here at the bottom, it puts it right next to where your original layout was, and that is a pretty big time saver compared to moving things around, especially if you have a whole bunch of folders open and things like that. Um, okay, so that leads directly to the next one, uh, tip number four, which has to do with changing a theme. So let's go to my newly copied layout here, and let's say that this one was classic or something that I don't want, and I want to change it to a different theme. So what I'll do is change my theme, to a different one, let's say more enlightened. But this doesn't look quite right. Okay, so you remember the tip we saw a little bit ago about undo being a two-stage button? Well, I'm gonna click undo once. And what that does is it leaves the theme that I just selected associated with the layout, but it leaves all of my, all of my custom CSS with all of the objects on my layout, so it still looks like it used to look. So there's, this is a plus minus kind of a thing because the all the objects now have custom CSS, which means they're taking up more space. It's definitely going to cause some issues if this layout is for WebDirect or uh, FileMaker Go. So um, this is one that you you know you should just know that it does that because when you click on your objects and look at them, they'll all have um, the formatting that they had before. So they may not may not be what you want. But in a lot of cases, that one undo can really be your friend. So it's a good feature. So that leads me to tip number three, which is 
Um, let's say that I have a field that I want here. I added a new field to the database, which is a next follow-up date. And so a common way that people add a new field to a layout is they go up to the field tool up here, and then they just click kind of where they want it to go. And then they choose in the pop-up what field they want. And that puts it in, but it might not look like you want it to look. Let's actually go to my other layout and do that because the theme here it makes more sense. Um, so if I use that same field, notice that the, the theme doesn't really look like all the other ones because I had put some other style on them. So a better way to get around this, and my favorite, I didn't pretty much never use this field tool because what I do instead is I take a look at the layout and I take a look at the field that's close to what I want in terms of formatting, and then I just option drag it, which makes a copy. Um, and then when I do that, it will make a copy, and it will leave all the formatting and settings uh, from the other field, including if it's uh, like a value list or a radio button or anything like that, all that stuff just comes along as well. Um, so even, it's just duplicating it. You can also just hit Control D, Command D, to make a copy and that which keeps all your other uh, stuff. But option drag is definitely what I do because it just seems to be more natural because you know, your hand is always kind of on the keyboard like that. Uh, okay, so that leads me to another tip here, um, which is tip number two. And that's this one. So let's say I add my field down here for next follow-up, and I want to change my label. A lot of people, what they'll do is they'll click on the text tool and then click down here to the thing, and then like double click or triple click or whatever to select it, or they'll just click on it and then double click again. They think that they basically have to have a cursor to change the text. But in FileMaker, you can actually just click once on your label and start typing, and it'll, it'll automatically just uh, know that what you want to do is, is uh, change the text. Pretty good, good time saver. Okay, next one. Let's say that you have things are kind of aligned um, in a little bit messy way and you want to be able to see exactly how they're lined up. Well, here's a really good way to do that, and that's to use the guides feature in FileMaker. But you can't really see the guides, and there's not really a menu to easily get to them, so here's what you do. If you go to the View menu and you go to Rulers, when you have the ruler here, you can drag out as many guides as you want from the ruler, and they come out like so. And then you can position them anywhere you want um, um, to line up to your field so that you can, for example, if I want this line to work over here, I can just grab that line over there. And then when I grab and move this, um, I think that's actually locked, um, it, it'll move and it will snap to the guide. So not only will it snap to the objects above and below and around it, it'll also snap to a guide, which is definitely a time saver. And that is my last tip for today. Thanks very much for listening and watching this video.